Hey everybody, this is my 1969 Ford Mustang Sports Roof, more commonly known as a Fastback. So this is the car that you could see in the background of that Mustang 2 video a few years ago, and I've finally gotten around to making a decent video of this particular car. That's a daily driver, uh, just a base model, and it has a completely amateur restoration that was done to it before I purchased it. But the bottom line is, the bare bones of it were in pretty decent shape and it was something to work with and I really wanted a car that wasn't a show car that I wouldn't be concerned about if it got any more scratches on it and something that needed a drive line because I already had one. Now underneath the hood of this particular car is what's important to me and that is a 1963 427 FE. Obviously I picked the best possible engine for a daily driver. Now the 427 has a bit of a bad rap and it comes from people talking about it being unstreetable and things like that, but I'll do a separate video on the 427 and what I think about those myths and legends and why they exist. So I've done a bunch of stuff to this car to make it more streetable because I do want a daily driver. And in fact, this car is my daily driver about seven months out of the year here in Minnesota. Um, obviously, not doesn't get driven in winter, doesn't get driven in salt. Some of those enhancements that I've made, a uh, vintage air, a generation four air conditioning conversion, a uh, CVF racing serpentine conversion that I just did recently, and it wound up sparking a whole bunch of other things. We have a 3G alternator. A uh, Ford Contour dual 16 inch replacement electric fan system um, and it comes with a Tremec TKO 600 five-speed manual uh, as far as an overdrive transmission. Uh, I went with a Hydra Boost setup for the braking system and I did this for multiple reasons. Everything is so tight in here guys with an FE um, but that works out really nice. Uh, part of the serpentine conversion wound up being a CVF Racing Saginaw style power steering pump and that replaced the pump that came with the Unisteer power rack and pinion conversion that I did. I also added a 9 inch rear end uh, kit with the four wheel disc brake setup from Quick Performance out of Iowa. Let's see underneath. If we can get down here anyway not too much to see. Coney Red Shocks all around. Uh, it has a mix of Dynamax and custom exhaust. As you might imagine, there have been a lot of changes to this car uh, throughout the process. Internally, the interior was in pretty good shape when I got it. Uh, the former owner had kind of done a Mach 1 style interior. Uh, I replaced the package tray as that was completely shot, and it's still not perfect in the back corners and stuff, but the seats were in pretty good shape. Uh, I replaced the steering wheel, and I like this one quite a bit. Uh, added some Stuart Warner gauges uh, that are vintage style like this tachometer, along with the green line gauges for oil pressure and voltage. It's got a retro sound uh, stereo that looks kind of old school, but does the things that I need it to. And I did have to replace the dash. It had a cheap cover on it and it just didn't work for me. Uh, of course, I did an American Auto Wire uh, full kind of a wiring kit conversion. Uh, and that's just because I added so many electrical components and the electrics were so bad on this car when I got it. It was just something that I, you know, really felt like I had to do for safety. Nobody wants their car to burn down. In the back trunk area, I've been playing around with this not too long ago. Yeah, of course, toolbox. I took it out for the first drive that it's been on since I had the engine out. And since I was going 80 miles, I decided a toolkit was necessary. I'm finishing up some of the carpet in here. Um, need some Velcro to hold these things down. But I built this panel to cover up things behind here. Um, I think it worked out pretty well. Just a lot of little stuff. So let's go ahead and take it for a drive and talk about it a little bit more on the road. Uh, starts right up. There's no choke on the 427. So if it was uh, 
if it was true that these engines didn't run and weren't streetable, that wouldn't have happened. Well, let's go ahead, take it for a little bit of a drive around the neighborhood here. So I can tell you that when I was looking for one of these cars, it was pretty hard to come by one in the general area that wasn't completely shot or super duper expensive. I happened across this one, uh, took a little bit of a drive to get there. It was clear out in, I don't know, pretty close to Milwaukee. Now these cars are, I don't know, they're pretty rare now. The sports roof or fastback, as they're more commonly known, well, they're, they're getting hard to come by decent ones. And people are asking a small fortune and were a few years ago when I bought this. However, I think prices have softened up probably in the last two or three years, to be honest. I don't know if it's been as soft on the 67s and 68s, but the 69s and 70s have softened up just a little bit. So if you're looking for one of these, you might be able to find one a little bit less expensive than what you were spending a few years ago. Now, as a daily driver of this one, it's important that it goes from A to B and is reliable and doesn't give me too many problems. And that's exactly what this one does. Now, there are occasional issues that come up and I want to upgrade things or change things. And you always have the bug to modify these things a little bit. At least I do. Um, and I can tell you that for me, this car is a good daily driver. You might not expect that it would be, but in all honesty, it does everything just fine for me. It's been reliable. It's never left me stranded. I've driven the car from Denver to San Francisco before, in fact. So, you know, it's, yeah, I guess it's got the track record that I need. I plan on making a full series of videos about this car and giving people information about a lot of the changes that I've made, a lot of the upgrades that I've done, and a lot of the vendors that I have purchased through. And I know that's not common when you look at YouTube videos, people are trying to make a small fortune or a career out of YouTube, to be honest. And naming names can put people into a rough spot when it comes to sponsors in the future and stuff. That's not what I'm looking to do. I'm basically just looking to help some people out, learn a little bit more about these cars, and you know, I don't know, be a good resource for folks. When it comes to driving the 69, it uh, if you watch my Mustang 2 video, the 69 drives a lot different than the Mustang 2. The Mustang 2 is a much smaller car and sportier and it's more modern. With the changes that I've made to this car, they were designed to make it a good daily driver for me while at the same time keeping all of the character of these cars from the muscle car era. And I think I did a really good job of it. I'm really happy with how well, almost everything and how it's turned out so far. Um, the car brakes well, it handles well, it steers well. It, it does everything well. Now it's not a modern car by any stretch of the imagination, but it's as good as you're gonna get a daily driver classic. I'm trying to figure out if this guy's gonna run the red light. I'll do separate videos on the engine and the transmission conversions and what I think about the process, things like a radiator and the fans and the air conditioning and the power rack and pinion and all that. But as just a little drive, I hope you can see that it's, it's pretty good. It's a little bit loud. I do have four mufflers on there, but um, they're not stock replacement style mufflers. So the car is a little bit loud and I'm, I've got a mic on so that you can hear me okay. But it's honestly really enjoyable to drive this car. It cruises down the road better than my, uh, I have a new Ford Focus and that's what I use for winter time and everything or fuel economy because this thing is not that. But um, it cruises down the road really nice. 
it uh, it's really fun to drive, and it gives it gives you the feeling of it's something special. This car has character. It's something more than a, a Toyota that's just going from A to B just to get you there. It's it's more than just transportation. That's something that I really enjoy having. So I hope that everybody has enjoyed this short little video uh, kind of talking about this car and I hope everybody is looking forward to hearing more. If you have anything in specific that you want to talk about in the car or any of the work that I've done, any of the conversions that I've done, uh, or the vendors that I've worked with or something, go ahead and leave a comment below. I plan on making a, a, a pretty good series of videos and whatever people want to hear about first is, I guess, probably what I will, I don't know, maybe talk about first. So until next time, have a great time out there and uh, enjoy your cars and enjoy the YouTube videos and all that good stuff. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.